Hello and welcome back. Uh, so last time we talked about the SVD, which is a way of decomposing a matrix into uh, three different pieces. Uh, two unitary matrices and a matrix that is zero everywhere except the diagonals. Uh, this gives you what are called left and right singular values, and it gives you a data-driven basis for describing new data points. Now, how can we use this? How can these basis functions actually be employed in, say, the real world? So, uh, last week, as almost all of you probably know, there was a mob that ri was rioting at the Capitol building and broken and even looted it. All sorts of people were seen taking pictures and sharing on social media, and also uh, just outright removing the podium. Uh, there weren't actually a whole lot of arrests that happened at the location itself, which leaves a lot of people wondering, well, what's gonna happen now? Uh, if you watch uh, the YouTuber Legal Eagle, he released a video, a one minute video, talking about what will happen to these people after the fact. Uh, it's not like you ha they have to be caught at the location, uh, and uh, many of them will be tracked down by the FBI and arrested later. Uh, and in fact, we're actually already seeing some of that happening now. Uh, how would the FBI uh, find these people uh, is the big question. The real answer is a good number of them have already posted uh, you know, photos of themselves, selfies, and all these other things up to social media, which makes them uh, easier to target and track down. Uh, but what about everybody else? Uh, the people who aren't uh, going up there and posting on social media, outing themselves as uh, one of the rioters? Well, this is where uh, the SVD comes in. So there's a combination of researchers and also companies that work for law enforcement uh, that are using things like facial recognition software. Uh, and this includes, uh, for instance, Clearview AI. Uh, and they are using their sophisticated uh, facial recognition software in order to find out uh, the identities of a lot of the writers who appear in photographs. Uh, but uh, it turns out that making a facial recognition software itself isn't actually all that bad. You could do this with your Apple Watch. One of the major techniques that really led to automatic facial recognition uh, is called the method of eigenfaces, uh, which is really just a layer on top of uh, just the SVD. The discussion I'm going to give you right now it comes from the Journal of Cognitive Neuroscience, and the title is Eigenfaces for Recognition. Uh, the paper was written by Turk and Pentland uh, in 1991, and they did all of this on a uh, Sun 3160. Uh, which I looked it up. It is a it is a Sun workstation that has a 16 megahertz processor, uh, and so this is 30 years ago, and with something that doesn't even compete with uh, a little dime store MP3 player that you might be able to pick up somewhere, uh, they were able to run uh, you know put together some facial recognition software. Uh, so how does this work, and how does SVD play in? Uh, so. Uh, essentially, what they do uh, is they take a whole bunch of pictures of faces. Uh, so uh, for them, uh, they just took little square uh, pictures that were uh, 256 by 256. Uh, so that was like, what, 16,000 uh, pixels altogether? Uh, and um, and they and took each one of those pictures, uh, spun it out as a column vector, uh, stacked them all together. Uh, they normalized uh, by the average of all of these faces. And, uh, and then after that, they ran an SVD. And this SVD gave them uh, a basis set to approximate any other face uh, that they run into. Uh, this is what they called eigenfaces. Uh, if you look at the eigenfaces, they look kind of weird and freaky. Uh, and But you can build up uh, any other face uh, from these eigenfaces uh, in sort of a piecemeal edition of them. And what's interesting is that uh, you can uh, take a new picture of a person uh, and project it onto uh, this eigenface basis, and you can get a reasonable reconstruction of the of that face. Um, now, how does uh, facial recognition come in? Well, when you do that projection onto, uh, say, face space, uh, that ends up being a it's a transformation. Uh, sort of just like what you would have like an, with an audio signal and you're using a Fourier transform, which basically sends uh, a waveform uh, on a finite interval to a collection of sines and cosines. Uh, here we're taking a face picture and we're sending it to, uh, uh, we're breaking it up into other uh, basis functions that are related to faces in some way. And so this is a lot less abstract than, say, uh, using sinusoids and other things like that. Uh, well, these are actual basis functions that we made from looking at a whole bunch of faces. And uh, But the only information you need to store is not 
uh, the original image, but rather each of the weights that were attached to the eigenfaces. Uh, if you store these weights, uh, you can use that for later identification. Say you have a whole bunch of pictures, say you have 10 different people and you have maybe 100 uh, pictures of them each. You take each of these 100 pictures and you take your eigenfaces, you do a projection of each one of these uh, pictures at a, for each one person, uh, take that whole stack of weights, uh, take their average, and then that becomes uh, your identifying uh, weight uh, for finding out who that belonged to. So if you run into a new picture of that person, you take a look at all the averages that you have over those 10 people, uh, and then you look at the uh, then you look at the, the weights obtained from the transformation of that new image, and you look at the, the distance from each one of those minimums. And whichever one is closest to, they say, aha, that is uh, the, uh, we have identified this person as uh, belonging to this face. Uh, or maybe the other way around. Um, but in either case, uh, so that, that's how they propose how to do it. Uh, nowadays, uh, it's been 30 years, we have uh, really amped up our, our classification, and so we can use uh, things like SVMs and other uh, modern tools for data science uh, to uh, run a classifier. So there we don't just use the average over all these weights, uh, we can actually use those as sort of centers for uh, support vectors. Uh, but that's for another lecture. So uh, why don't we go ahead and take a look at uh, seeing if we can make up our own eigenfaces. Uh, there's data sets that are available in uh, Stephen Brunton's book, and uh, but uh, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, give a shot at using something from Kaggle. Uh, Kaggle is a website where they provide lots of free data sets uh, for you to download, just with a little bit of a login, uh, and, uh, and it allows you to go ahead and uh, and you know, I, and it gives you a lot of data sets to play with, especially if you are uh, new to data science. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut over to my computer and uh, we'll see what we can put together. All right. So we'll see and uh, see you in a bit.